I just arrived at the uh, Dachau concentration camp and uh, if nothing else it will be an interesting experience I'm sure. So now let's uh, start checking out the memorial camp. Now we're actually entering the camp. Construction of the barracks right there. This is where the barracks were. Here's the museum. This is uh, how big the concentration camp was. <clears throat> and this is the part that we are in today. So everything else, leave, has pretty much been uh, leveled. It's just uh, amazing how massive. All right, so I just finished touring the uh, museum. And this was the old, uh, what was it? Like the processing center, they had showers, they had kitchens in here. It's basically a lot of the general functions to keep the camp up and running. And um, if you wanna have an okay day, don't watch the film that they have in there for the museum. It'll certainly, uh, especially if you're already having a bad day. But the camp itself uh, was mainly actually a collection and distribution camp where they would uh, take in a lot of workers or prisoners, or slaves, whatever, and distribute them out to do things like work in the munitions factories and so on. But they also did uh, experiments on them here, medical experiments, mainly for hypothermia and uh, in marine environments, high altitude and uh, things of that nature. Uh, some of, or one of the companies they mentioned that the prisoners here worked for, include none other than BMW. So, if you watched my BMW World video, you'll probably hear that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's go check out the barracks now, see what's going on. So this would have been the sleeping quarters from 33 to 37. And uh, the camp was overcrowded, I think, by five times by the end of the war. So the conditions changed a bit. Here they have individual bunks and such. They felt they needed to make better use of their concentration camp population. So they came up with some incentives. Here in 1938. Doesn't look like you could fit more people in these bunks, but I'm sure that each one wasn't just for one person. I guess these are facilities to uh, clean yourself up. Bathroom facilities. And here would have been 1944. So at this point they just did away with the individual bunks and just had rows. Pretty intense. This uh, is reconstructed because everything, at least all the bunks were leveled at the end, I don't really know. But um, <coughs> Thousand prisoners, and by the end they had thirty thousand here. Like that. Guard the tower. Now we're gonna walk down here and go to the uh, crematorium because even though this wasn't an extermination camp per se, you know, they still had. 
had all the facilities to get rid of people. This is, uh, I think it's an actual aerial photograph. And uh, so this is what it looked back then. Looked like back then. This is uh, part of the Catholic chapel. Protestant one, and here the Jewish one, or maybe it reversed that, but these are the religious memorials, and over there is the crematorium. some reason. It seems like the crematorium was just a place to get rid of the people that died within the camp and the gas chamber didn't get turned on to exterminate anyone here but they don't know why. It's still really eerie. These are the chambers used to disinfect the clothing that they took from the uh, prisoners. I'm assuming so that they could give them to other prisoners. This is the original crematorium that they built to dispose of uh, the uh, dead prisoners before they had to expand it into this building. <clears throat> it's uh, really eerie to think about that you're walking where thousands of dead bodies were brought to be burned and in the camp thousands of people were worked to death and that that just happened 70 years ago. <laughs> and the only difference is a change in government, I guess. It's really creepy. Here's the famous Arbeit Macht Frei sign. And I'm now uh, heading out of the camp. And the one thing I have to say is, uh, uh, you can go ahead and skip going to the concentration camps here, you really don't need to see them. There's, <clears throat> unless you want to kind of feel bad about things, <laughs> or never want to uh, buy anything from the companies that used these workers in the 30s and 40s, or 40s, you know. It's really just kind of a downer to go and see all the history and walk where thousands, tens of thousands of people died or worked to death were hung, hung, shot, and beaten. <clears throat> yeah, not, not a, the most pleasant experience. Uh, how to get here though, it's kind of confusing. You can take the S-Bahn S2 to Dachau Hauptbahnhof, or to the Dachau station, I don't know if it's a Hauptbahnhof for that. Or you can take the normal regional bond, or the RE, and it only takes 10 minutes with that. Um, 
It's a little confusing to find out which track it's on, so just ask one of the information people at the train station to help you out with that. That's what I did. And you can get a day ticket. It'll take you here, include the bus, and take you back for €7.50. Euro it's uh, like a Munchen card XXL or something like that. But if you're confused, go to the information center and you can do that. Once you get here, you have to take the 726 bus, so 726, and you take it to either the end or just the concentration camp memorial site stop, which the bus driver will tell you that you're there when you get there. It's only like five or six minutes away. 